I think first off, I mean, it just comes down to markets love certainty, right? And there's just been so much fodder around. Is it going to be a quarter point, a half a point in March? And then Jay Powell basically expressed yesterday exactly what the Fed's going to do. And it's less hawkish, right? So the less hawkish the Fed is, the more easy money's flowing. And obviously, that's great for risk assets. So I think that's absolutely, absolutely a positive in the short term. And in terms of complacency, I think, you know, bottom line is, look, I mean, we know historically any conflict we've had like this, uh, barring World War II, you know, whether it was the annex of, uh, of you know, Crimea, part of Ukraine back in, in 2014 or any of these other smaller wars that we've had over the years, uh, you know, markets tend to react in the short term, but then they move on. Uh, and we don't tend to go into a bear market. So I think, you know, once you strip out the Ukraine, which is a terrible situation, and I spent uh, a lot of time in Ukraine, so I have a lot of empathy for the Ukrainian people. Uh, but from a market perspective, you know, it's a very, very small part of global GDP. And, you know, the other issue is the U.S. economy is rocking, right? And we're not hearing a lot about that right now, but that bodes well for, for risk assets. So I know you say that, uh, you know, markets don't tend to fall into a bear territory on these geopolitical risks, but there is quite a lot of bearish sentiment out there. Powell said he can achieve a soft landing. How confident are you of that? And then how worried are you about stagflation or a recession on the horizon? Well, first off, I love pessimism. The more pessimistic investors are, the <laughs> more bullish that is for investors. So I, I bring in the pessimism. I embrace it. It means it's probably a good buying opportunity. And, you know, I do think the Fed will be behind here. And we're already seeing that they're already backing off, right, going with a quarter uh, point hike in March. And they probably should be more aggressive because we know inflation right now is at insane levels. But at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to recession because the bottom line is, look, the middle class has a trillion dollars more today than they did before the pandemic. We know wages are going up. And the one you know, piece of conventional wisdom, which is just not true, is inflation probably isn't going to stay this high. If you look at the five-year inflation number, it's more like 3%. That's a lot lower than over 7% we have today. So the bond market, which is way smarter than the equity market, is already telling you that inflationary pressure is going to go down. Meanwhile, wages should stay high. And look, we've got the pandemic turning into an endemic. We're down like 90% from peak uh, COVID cases. So people are going to live this summer. They're going to spend money. They have more money. And that's just like awesome for the economy. And of course, that should equate to profits from companies, which is going to push the stock market even higher here. So then let's talk about the portfolio. How do you allocate in this sort of market with soaring oil prices, taking a breather today and commodities sky high as well? Yeah, it's a really good point. So the only, if you if you have to look at it right now, the only part of the market that's really getting hammered here is growth and that horrid disruptive technology trade that's just been trading, you know, to the moon. Um, if you look at the Arc Fund, which kind of is your your flagship disruptive technology fund, it's down almost 60% from peak to trough. Uh, growth stocks are down like 13% this year, whereas value stocks are down less than 2% for the year. Um, and you mentioned commodity prices. I mean, commodity prices are going through the roof, obviously, because of the conflict going on between Russia and Ukraine. They're a huge exporter of grains. And of course, uh, Russia being a huge exporter of oil. So I, I think this speaks to right now is it's so important to be diversified because every strategist at the beginning of the year, which usually get it wrong, no one told you that they thought that Russia was going to invade Ukraine uh, and that was going to push commodity prices up really, really high here. So I think you want to have commodity exposure in your portfolio, uh, value stocks over growth stocks, because with inflation kicking in, it's companies that have pricing power and that pay big dividends. And that's going to skew towards value, uh, whereas growth could bounce here because it had such a horrible run right now. But at the end of the day, we know growth stocks don't do as well in a higher inflationary environment. And that's what we have today. Real quick, only about 20 seconds left. How does energy look for you? Still room to run. And then how does cash look as an asset to hold right now? I know I probably get yelled at for asking that. <laughs> <laughs> well, number one, energy still looks good as a long-term play. May have some more volatility in here, but energy stocks trade cheap. And peak energy demand still like a decade away. Talk about it on my podcast, Pain Points of Wealth, the best financial podcast. Go to bebullish.com. And cash is trash. You can't sit in, in cash paying 0.01% when inflation seven, you want to own a diversified portfolio. You don't want to be in cash here. You heard it here first.